<laughs> this is Pastor Gary, and uh, here with you for another Wednesday's Word. And tonight we're going to be in Romans. Uh, but before we go any further, let's uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just thank you for your grace and your mercy, Father. Father, I thank you that that we can come to you, Father, and lift up these petitions to you, Father. Father, and I do lift up those on our prayer uh, line, Father. And Father, those that have lost loved ones, Father, those that are going through uh, trials, Father, those that are that are losing jobs, Father, those that have loved ones in the hospital, Father, those that 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 just need prayer, Father. I ask that you just just comfort them where they are, Father. Father, I thank you that you're such a loving Father that that we can come to you, Father. Father, and 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 lift these up to you, Father. Father, I pray for this time, Father, that you just anoint this time, Father, that you just block all the distractions, Father, so that we can just spend time in your word, Father, at your feet, Father. And it's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Well, amen. Well, let me start by asking a question. Have you ever uh, had a plan on how you wanted things to work out? So you got so excited about this plan and couldn't wait for it to happen, but then you later found out that your spouse had a plan as well and it was nowhere near where your what your plan was? You know, you know, just like you and, and your spouse or you and your family have plans for your lives, you know, God has a plan for you too, has a plan for your life as well. And, and there are times that we like how God's plan unfolds for us, you know, especially when it when it's a plan that it's aligned with our plan. Uh, then there are times that God has a plan that's different than our plan. And it's during these times that, that we can become disappointed, frustrated on how all of this is unfolding. But, you know, God is speaking to us throughout all of this. Now, we did a our lift groups did a lift study, uh, I'd say maybe two studies ago, and it was called Experiencing God. And in that study, one of the things that we learned was that uh, was to look back at our lives and, and to learn and to connect the spiritual markers. Now, spiritual markers are events that have happened in our lives, a specific moment in time where you know God was speaking to you. It is those spiritual markers that have brought you to where you are today. Now, some of the things that God has done and is currently doing are easy to accept. Others, not so much. Uh, but no matter what those spiritual markers were that God brought you to and through, one thing that we know for sure is that God is sovereign and he always has a plan. So if you'll open up to Romans chapter 11, I want to read uh, verses 33 and 34. And, and Paul writes this. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and unfathomable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who became his counselor? Isaiah, now we're going to go to Isaiah 58. In Isaiah 58, we're going to read verses 8 through 11. And in that, in those verses, this is what we read. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there without watering the earth, and making it bare and sprout, and furnishing seed to the sower and the bread to the eater, so will my word be which goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. So no matter what is happening in your life today, we must believe and have faith that God has a plan for whatever it is and that, and that his plan is going to happen in his perfect timing. Now, tonight's uh, scripture that we're really going to be focusing on is Romans 8, 28. So if you could open up to Romans 8, 28. And Paul reminds us here of, of one of God's promises. And in that, this is what we read in that verse. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. So let me read that again. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Now, Often we feel overwhelmed by life's situations and circumstances. You know, we get bombarded by so many things from all different directions. Things that tend to tear us down from time to time. Things that make us feel as if we, we failed or that we're failures. Things that make us lose sight of the fact that God has a plan, a purpose, and a design for our lives. It is in the midst of these failures or difficulties that God is moving us into a position 
that he needs us to be in so his plan could unfold. See, in different times in my life, I've we've I've been in times of, of difficult situations. I've been in difficult, you know, had difficult times in my life. You know, for instance, you know, Sophia and I have gone through our share of difficult seasons during our marriage. We've had issues with our finances. We've experienced the loss of loved ones. But one thing that I've always found to be true is that during these times that I feel lost and hopeless, God has a map. At the moment that I feel like that things are just, it's, it's an absolute disaster, God has a blueprint. At the moment that I feel there is nothing going right, God has a plan. You might be going through marital issues. You might be going through financial issues, medical issues, loss of loved ones, but know that none of these things are happening without God knowing about them. You know, God is sovereign and he has a plan. That is why we have to cling on to God's promise of Romans 8, 28. We will always face trials and tribulations in our Christian walk. It is not like the all things in that verse, the all things that, that Paul writes about uh, here are just getting together on their own and trying to figure out a way to create good. You know, life is not a matter of fate, chance, and karma. And then God ultimately shows up at the end and make things work out or make things right. You know, know that from the beginning to the end, God is using everything in our lives, the easy and the difficult, the pleasure and the pain, the happiness and the hurt to accomplish his plan for you. God's plan is bigger than our problems. God promise, promises us that no matter how difficult or painful or long lasting those problems might be, God will bring good out of that because he has a bigger plan that he is carrying out. He is using even our problems in that process. Think about it. We could take the cross. God watched his only son being arrested. That's not good. God watched his only son get beat by a cat of nine tails. That's not good. Then he saw a crown of thorns being put on, his, on Jesus' head. That's not good. He was nailed to a cross, bleeding in agony. That's not good. But you know what happened? God took all of those things that were not good and did something that was good to pay our sin debt so that we could have forgiveness of our sins and have eternal life with God. Now that's good. So three important truths about this promise that we read about in Romans 8, 28. The first is this, this promise is certain. In Greek, this sentence actually begins with the verb, we know. Now in, in the Greek, there are two main words that can, be, that can be translated to know. The one that Paul uses here means to know inwardly. This type of knowledge cannot come by experience or observation. Paul is emphasizing the idea that this truth may not be evident just by observing this world, but it is 100% true and completely reliable and certain. So what we what he is reminding us here is that in the midst of, of our suffering, we, might, we may not know what to pray for, but we can know with 100% confidence that God is working for good and we should be encouraged by that. Amen? The second thing is this promise is only for those who love God. This is not a universal promise for everyone. Paul is not claiming here that life is going to work out for everyone regardless of the relationship with God. It is only a promise for those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. It's interesting here that Paul doesn't say those who believe in God. He said those who love God. You can't really believe in God unless you love God. And you can't really love God unless you believe God. The third thing about this promise is that this promise is not limited. Do you know what the phrase all things means in the underlying Greek? It literally means all things. That includes the good things God that God entrusts us with, our families, our jobs, our, mer our, our material possessions, our talents, our abilities. It includes our problems and difficulties, losing a job, getting sick, death of a loved one, arguments with your spouse. It includes pandemics. It includes the minor frustrations of everyday life, car problems, traffic, long lines, problems at work, an argument, you know, uh, issues with your family. All those things is what God is using. 
for good. So no matter what we have cleared, now, so, so now that we have cleared up what all things means, which means all things, we can now define what good is. Because I have a definition of good, you have a definition of good, but God's definition of good is, is really not our definition, right? And so, because we have the natural tendency to define good from, from a self-centered, self-centered perspective, right? Uh, we tend to think good, that good is a synonym for comfortable or pleasant or happy, healthy and wealthy. But as we're going to see, Paul does not use the word that way. You know, Paul uses uh, uh, this word, and it's a common word, that means beneficial, profitable, useful. So the question really is, beneficial, profitable, useful to who? It is for the good of God accomplishing his plan. But it is also good for you and me to make us more like Jesus, which is God's purpose, which is his plan. It is, you know, and we get this out of verse 29. It says to become conformed to the image of his son. It can be very easy to get distracted and down when we are enduring various trials and tribulations. But I want to read to you a very powerful passage in, in, in 2 Corinthians 4, verses 8 and 9. And it says, we are not afflicted in every way, or we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not despairing, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. Let me read that again because I kind of messed it up. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not despairing, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. God is always with us no matter what we're going through. We will oh, we will all be afflicted at some point in our lives. We, But know that, he, that God has a plan, just like Paul knew that God had a plan for him. See, some of us are going to be, are, are going through affliction right now. That is your current reality. But know that, that we will not be destroyed by our afflictions because our God is greater than our afflictions. Sometimes we don't understand why things are happening to us. We, we get confused and worry about what is going on. But as believers, we can't stay in a constant state of despair because we serve a great God who loves us. And he will help us to understand our circumstances in his time. Not ours, because his timing is perfect. God has a plan for me, and I want to be a part of that plan no matter how God decides to work out his plan in my life. And I've gone through those things. You know, many of you know the story of, of how, you know, prior to coming to, to on full time at Believer's Fellowship, you know, I was in a position that, that I loved. I thought I was going to stay there and retire there. But God had a different plan, and things didn't start... Things tend, things started to, to not work out in my favor, you know, and, 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 and things just weren't working out at the, where I was, but God was setting his plan in place. I had to go through those trials so that me leaving that job wasn't as difficult as I thought it would be. It was a natural progression to me to come full time at Believer's Fellowship because that was God's plan. So what about you? Will you welcome the plan that God has for you, no matter what that plan is? No matter what he requires you to do? Know that God is sovereign. We have to defer to him in all things at all times. At the end of the day, we as believers must come to understand that many of our blessings in life come through trials and tribulations. Sometimes blessings are not wrapped in beautiful packages. And we have to not only acknowledge this is true, but we have to embrace it in our hearts and minds as well, that it is truth. Paul wrote this about how happy and content, no matter uh, what he was going, what was going on in his life. You know, these words will help us today if we will do what he wrote in Philippians 4, 11 through 13. Not that I speak from want. For I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. I know how to get along with humble means. And I also know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance. 
I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Paul was able to write this to us because he had learned to trust in the Lord. He knew that God had a plan for him. We must stop leaning on ourselves and our own understanding and learn to lean on the Lord, to trust that he is going to take care of us. Even when we can't see the whole picture, know that God has a plan for you. Sometimes we have a natural tendency to assume that the trials in our lives are God's punishments for something that, that we've done wrong. And in some cases, uh, it could, that could be, it could be that God is using those trials to, to, to lovingly discipline you. But far more often when trials come, they are just part of God's much larger plan to make us more like Jesus to enable us to become a more effective witness for him and the gospel, to be vessels for Christ. I know right now that many of you are going through some very painful situations in your life. But the good news is that if you are a disciple of Jesus, you can face those trials knowing without a doubt that God is working in your life to accomplish his plan and that his plan is much larger and bigger than your problem. So as we pray, would you take a moment just to thank God for that? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you for the reminder, Father. We thank you for your promises, Father, that, that although, yes, we do go through things, Father, that is not the promise that you, you gave us, Father, that we would live a life without trials, Father, that we would live a life without tribulations, Father. That is not your promise to us, Father. The promise is that you will be with us, Father, and that your plan is bigger than our problems, Father. Father, we thank you that you love us so much, Father. I thank you for your son, Jesus, Father, who went through all those horrific things, Father, for the good that we can have eternity with you, Father. Father, I just continue to just lift up all those that are those people that are going through things father father i pray for those that that don't know you father that they are living this life father without you father and father that just hurts my heart so much to know that there are people out in the world father that don't know you father there are people in our families that that don't know you and the love that you have for them father father i ask that you put people in their path father to share the word father to share the gospel with them father Father, we thank you for all that you do. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen. Well, personally, I want to thank you for uh, just continuing to pray for Penelope, uh, mine and Sophia's niece. Uh, you know, she continues to be in the hospital. They continue to run tests on her to find out what's going on. And boy, she's a, she's a fighter. She uh, She's just laughing and doesn't even know what's going on. I mean, she's 11 months, but you know, she every time we, we see her, talk to her, FaceTime, she's just giggling and laughing. And, and so I would ask that you continue to lift her up. Also lift up her family, uh, her parents, Chris and, and Erica Yarborough, and just our entire family as, as we continue to uh, just try to minister to them. Um, but uh, just uh, continue to reach out to each other and just to check on people. Uh, you know, this social distancing really is creating social isolation. And, uh, you know, we don't ever want anybody to feel like they're isolated. So just, uh, you know, if you're thinking about somebody right now, just pick up that phone and call them and just tell them you love them and that Jesus loves them. Amen. Uh, well, you know, also I wanted to let you know that, uh, we're, hey, we're coming back to, to live in-house services uh, May 24th. And so just be uh, be praying for that. Uh, and, and also we'll be coming up next week uh, with the video, what to expect uh, when you come return to church. And so uh, I can't wait to see you. Uh, but until then, uh, look forward to, to seeing you on Facebook. Uh, be sure to, to like, comment, and share, uh, you know, our Wednesday words as well as our Sunday service. And uh, with, with that being said, good night and God bless.